Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Oh, so great. We have a brand new year just a few weeks away, and a lot of us, yeah, maybe you're thinking about making some changes with your life. Maybe it's personally, professionally. How do you do that? Change is not easy. Can't do it alone. Trust me, I, I know. <laughs> it just can't be done. You need help. You need somebody to walk you through it. And sometimes friends and family aren't going to be as impartial as they need to be. And then that lies having a great coach. And Michelle Goche is here. She's an amazing mindset and mentality coach with Phoenix Coaching. And she's back on the program. Michelle, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's good to have you here. You know, last time we got together, we didn't mention the fact that you have a book called Becoming the Phoenix. And yes. love the title. And even the title of Phoenix Coaching. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I picture Phoenix rebirth, new beginning. Am I, am I right there? Absolutely. And why I love the symbol of the Phoenix, obviously it's my book, it's my um, business, but it's, for me, it's letting go of the past. So what doesn't serve you, let that just do its own thing and then rise even stronger, even more confident, whatever it is you want to rise into, you get to rise into that. Yeah. Sometimes it's really tough when you're, when the past is a recent past and it, it's still next to you, you know, let's, let's say something happened, uh, maybe a trauma situation, yeah. end of relationship, whatever it might be, it's still there and you know, it's there, but it's still following you along. What's your, what's your first advice for somebody dealing with that and trying to, you don't want to, I guess, not forget the past, but not repeat the past, but learn from the past, but it's still there. It's still marinating around you. Any advice there? Yeah, absolutely. So my first invitation is to just let yourself feel it fully, fully experience whatever happened, because many people are like, okay, I know this thing happened. I let myself be bad for like one second, and then I've just pushed it down. So it's always going to be hanging on and like holding arms with you as you stroll through life going forward. Yep. But if you let yourself fully experience any emotions that come up, whatever they feel like, it's not always easy. But that's really the only way to be able to process it and work through it and then move forward. This is probably going to be the toughest question coming out of my mouth today. But okay, how do you know that you've spent enough time processing it and I dealing with it? I love that question. And you won't. <laughs> um, so for me and... So I'm going to go a little bit into my book. And a lot of it is the story of me going through my own depression and recognizing it, acknowledging it, and then going from there. So there was a lot of time that I kind of rejected the idea of it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is temporary. It's fine. When I change jobs, when I move to a different location, I will be okay because it's just the circumstance that's happening. Mm. I learned quickly that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, because like we just said before, the uh, call it the backpack, the depression backpack yeah. Was, yeah. was following you everywhere you went. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So it has taken me a long time and a lot of like internal work to be okay and get on the other side of my depression. There are still times that it pops up and it's okay. So when it does, often I'm like what is happening right now why am I feeling this way um but I let myself I've learned to let myself when I feel sad to let myself cry even if I don't know why it's happening feels good just, doesn't it it does I, I know it sounds, it sounds silly but sometimes it's like and then when it's over it's like oh huh, all right yeah I'll just move on now Ex exactly and sometimes it's just like okay five minutes just cry it out and then I'm okay and so to further answer your question you won't always know mm. and it can change from day to day month to month year to year so for that day maybe just acknowledging and getting in touch with those feelings is like an hour of just sitting with it feeling uncomfortable crying screaming whatever it is and then two months from now maybe it's five minutes or maybe it's a whole day who knows but as, as much as I don't want to sound like, well, you're doomed forever. <laughs> as long as you're letting yourself experience whatever's coming up, 
feeling the feelings because a lot of people don't like feeling emotions mm. um you will be able to work through it faster but also you won't have the stress the emotional frustration behind it as if you were just pushing it down and repressing it so i'm going to turn the um the topic car a little bit here okay since you opened the door of the car <laughs> so um because it's all kind of tied in together so many so many of us deal with depression yeah and that can also manifest itself into anxiety and lots yeah. of other things that are going on in in your situation or even just offering advice mm -hmm. do you look for moments of happiness let's say you're going through yeah maybe this is you know yeah, I'm not feeling as good as I usually feel. Do you look ahead and say, but I know that I got that coming up on Friday. That's probably going to be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving any example, but look for those bright spots ahead in as we're driving the depression car ahead. Do you? Do you? Um, absolutely, I do. I, I have found that it helps me having something to look forward to. But That's then I also, also know when I'm in a depressive episode, let's call it, it's mm -hmm. hard to get excited about that. Okay. So something that I have found work is just like celebrate a win. And that can be like, I got out of bed today and got dressed. Or like I brushed my teeth or I had one piece of food. <laughs> like whatever the like littlest thing that you're just like, Do you know what? Today I actually have something that like, yay, go me. And I find that that helps me in those moments, even if it's one thing for the whole day. Perfect. <laughs> I, and thank you for sharing that. I, I don't even, I don't think that is just depression. I think that is a plus because let's face it. Some days are just like, all right, you know, I'm doing life, you know, yeah. it's all right. And then that one little thing pops up, you get a phone call and it's something that's a little bit better than all the other stuff. It's like, Oh, Oh, that's all right. Yeah. You know, okay, great, great. And then, and then you yeah. move it forward. Exactly. And I have found that when you celebrate the small wins, because I have I have had trouble with that in the past, just like I didn't mm -hmm. get this like huge thing done on my to do list. But celebrating the small wins helps your brain to then look for the small things to celebrate. Yes. And it's just practicing gratitude. And the more you practice gratitude, the more you, it just becomes natural. And you're like, OK, today wasn't like a throw off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But you you recognize by by recognizing the the small wins what it feels like for you yeah and then you can maybe duplicate that in the future and then you know like oh that was good oh wow, that was even better oh, sorry. You know, again the little things are okay and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that uh yeah and, and i guess it is also live in the moment instead of trying to put yourself here and put yourself there unless it's something you're looking forward to over here right. whatever that might be um but yeah i only brought that up because i think it's it ties into the mindset and our our mentality when we're trying to to move our lives forward whatever that might be whether Absolutely. it's looking for a new job or you know just new opportunity different relationship whatever it i think it's all intertwined it's yeah, somewhere. absolutely and i love that you did bring that up because it is such a simple thing and it's easy to get caught up in the things that are going wrong or that didn't work or the expectations you set for yourself that you didn't meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one, that one I tend to go to a lot in my brain. Um, mm. But it's just like for today, not this isn't a true example, but for example, like for today, I set out to mow the lawn, do my laundry, have a shower, like whatever. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, it's take a shower not have a shower i mean <laughs> i don't know maybe that's a canadian thing and this is you know, the states i don't know I'm maybe, like maybe it's a me thing i don't know <laughs> it's, it's interesting when you think about it though it's like how do you take a shower give me that shower i want that shower now i'm gonna Absolutely. take it um, but then like having it i don't know that's what you know what thing. i actually from a from a gratitude level i think having it is better than taking it mm, okay <laughs> you know? yes what about if you didn't have water you know you 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 have a shower guess what i have a shower yeah instead of I, i'm gonna take a shower yeah I so like that. you made me think all right so there we go just have a shower yeah have a shower. Um, but i know sometimes our to-do lists we just pack it so full that yeah. it's not like you cannot actually do all the things in a day and then you look back on it and be like well what did i even accomplish because there's still like six things on here i didn't do mm. and 
I don't know if you, Steve, or the listeners out there, but like when I have a to-do list, sometimes I'll do something off of it and then put it on my to-do list just so I can cross it off. <laughs> say that one more time. I want to be sure I got that. Yeah. So say I have a to-do list of like five things. And then in my procrastination side of me, I do something else that's not on my to-do list, but still had to be done, um, like putting laundry away. Mm -hmm. I will then add it to my to-do list to cross it off so it looks like I actually accomplished something that day. Ah, uh, mind trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Exactly. Hmm, gotta, gotta use that one. I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Take it. Go it's, for it. I, I, I try not to put the pressure on unless it's very important things that have to be taken, have yeah. to be done today. It'll almost be like the weekly to-do list and these are the things. And, you know, like I, I was supposed to make an appointment uh, medically connected yesterday yeah. and it came up and I was a notification. Ah, didn't get to it. So I went back to either it's Google calendar or I use any dot do uh, to do any dot do or it works. It's an app. It's free. <laughs> and, and I just took it and I dragged it into today. Okay. And as I was driving, I was like, all right, I got time while I'm driving. Let me, you know, pick up the phone and try and do that. But I wasn't successful in that. It said, when you want to make a future appointment, press two yeah. And leave you know, all the information and then we'll call you back. I'm like, nah, man, we just want to get it done, but I can't control that. That's another thing. Things that you can't control. Yeah. You got to let go. Yeah. And that's definitely easier said than done. Yes. Oh, it <laughs> but is. I, I have asked myself that, like, what can I control? And usually it's like my emotions and how I show up. Mm. And like emotions are a tricky one just because they just, happen as they happen but also once as we've talked about once you acknowledge them and address them and you're like okay let's feel this emotion then you can go from there and choose how you're going to do it like go from there how you're going to use those emotions so you could be upset about something feel it and then you have the choice of do i lash out or do i take that and like okay how do i get to learn from this and is there a more productive way to show up mm -hmm. And people, you can't control them <laughs> as much as we either want to, but then we let them control us. Yeah. And most times they don't care. They're just doing whatever they're doing, but we allowed it to happen. Yeah, exactly. And I find a lot of people like, well, you made me feel angry or you upset me. And in the end, you control how you interpret whatever happens. Yeah. So like, Steve, you could be like, Michelle, you are the biggest frog I've ever seen covered in warts. And I can either choose to be really offended because you just called me a frog covered in warts or I just laugh it off. And while that's an extreme example, we can do that with anything that people say to us. Yeah. Yeah. We give them the control. Yeah. All right. So we we diverted for a moment, but <laughs> Becoming the Phoenix, the book, what are other points yes. in there that we should talk about? Uh, Yeah. So what I, it was a very interesting journey for me writing this book. Um, but what I really love about it is I talk about just how intricate the mind is and just how we basically create our own realities. And as I said, it's kind of the story of me coming into recognizing that I might be depressed <laughs> and acknowledging that it's not a life sentence. So even if you have depression, and I know many people out there have it, which awesome, but not, I get it. Um, it doesn't have to consume you. There are ways, there are mindset things that can happen. A lot of work on yourself to be able to acknowledge that it's a part of you, but it's not all of who you are. And many of us have those things, whether yeah. it's a physical thing, whether it's a mental thing, whatever it is there, it's more and more I see and I'm more aware. I do see it like, yeah. and you know, somebody is dealing with this medical issue over there or this one here. And it's like, I don't even, I, I look at people and I'm wonderful and they may be thinking, Oh my God, look at this. You know, I got this on my face and I got to do this. I got to do that. Right. Look, I have minor skin cancer. I have, you know, stitches here, stitches here, but dealing mm -hmm. with it for, you know, decades going to go later today and get more fixed. Um, that's a part of me. 
Oh, well, that's the way it is. At somebody has something else. So, you know, I just talked with somebody the other day that was dealing with something, you know, medically connected. And, yeah. but like you said, it doesn't, it's not all of you. It's just a part of you. But sometimes we take that and our minds take it and they blow it up. So it's like this major thing going on. And sometimes it feels that way, but it's really not the whole sum of us. Yeah, absolutely. And while you were sharing that, it came to me. And it's just like the most powerful words you can ever say are I am and then whatever follows it. Mm. Because you are speaking it as if it's true. And so I have learned to either say like I have had because it means it's in the past or I have experienced or even I am experiencing. So it can be depression. It can be tiredness. It could be um not being able to focus. I can't think of what the word that actually would be, but not being able to focus or um, people who want to lose weight. I've had a friend who's like, I'm fat. And I was like, you're not fat. You just have fat. Because as soon as you mm. say it's, I am, it's a part of you instead of something that doesn't have to last. Yeah. You confirmed it by, by saying that. Yeah. Somebody also told me as well to ask the question. So is it true that I have depression and I deal with it and life is good. Mm -hmm. So you're questioning yourself, but it makes yeah. it, you're validating it by questioning yourself. Is it true? And then you put the, uh, the you know, fill in the blank after that. Yeah, absolutely. I actually had that conversation yesterday about like, I love asking that, is it true? <laughs> like, Isn't that weird? We can yeah. apply that to, I know we have this weird like wavelength going on, Steve. <laughs> I know, it's like weird. Um, <laughs> And, and, but, and I haven't heard that one in a while, but as you were saying, I am that yeah. top that popped in my head. Yeah. And we can, you can apply it to anything. So like, I, I suck. I'm a failure. I'll never be able to accomplish whatever. And it's like, well, is it true? Has it always been that way? Cause probably not. There's something mm -hmm. in your past that like, oh, I always fail. Well, when was the time you did succeed? And then finding that re-establishing that into your mind and your memory and be mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe it's not true always. Yeah. It's almost like, again, a subconscious mind trick that you're yeah. just reprogram reprogramming your, your subconscious by using that, that type of language. Yeah. Do you, you know, another statement popped in my head and I actually have it on a, on a, a reminder on my phone. Mm. Um, everything I need is within me now because yeah. we have everything we need. We might be thinking, oh, you know, this is not... I, I got to figure this out. I got to figure that out. You can figure it all out. Everything is, is within you. Sometimes it's not easy to access it because yeah. of things like anxiety, depression, uh, just life in general, but it's all there. Even to heal yourself, you know, it, medically heal yourself. It is within you. The body's amazing, but why can't you heal yourself from certain things? Because you're dealing with other things and you can, yeah, you know, like, exactly. like stress. Yeah, exactly. And also just beliefs we've created about ourselves. And yeah. those those run deeper than we know they do. So like logically and consciously, you could be like, no, oh, yeah. I definitely deserve to make a million dollars in a year. But somewhere under all the layers and maybe very quiet, there's something that's continuously on a loop being like, oh, I'll never be able to have financial freedom. Or when I was six, I got told that I have to work hard to earn money and it doesn't flow easily mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. Which was probably most of us. Probably. Um, <laughs> like like when, when your, your parents would say that uh, money doesn't grow on trees. What, you know, no, we can't have that. Uh, mommy yeah. can't afford that today. I will, I will say this. Because of that, and I was raised by my mom. She was single. Mm -hmm. um, I made my own toys. I didn't have any money. Okay. I did. I do the opposite for my kids. I, I make it so they're more comfortable, not like crazy to spoil them. Yeah. But part of me says probably not the best thing either because their values are different. You know, my, my son gets it. My daughter, she's getting it. But, you know, she, if I say, Hey, you want to go to the mall and, uh, you know, we'll buy some jeans and, uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> My son would say, wait, are you sure? You know, but it's, you know, it goes either way, but I didn't yeah. want them to have what I had, but on the other side, it's, it's a very delicate balance. 
It it definitely is. And I find that a lot of people are like, I don't want to be like my parents. I'm going to do like the opposite or whatever. Like I'm mm-hmm. going to give my children the life that I didn't have that I wanted. Yeah. But like, I love your story that you're like, I just made my own toys. And that's like beautiful because in life, anything that comes our way, we can choose to let it hinder us or to make us stronger. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here today with a broadcast career that started when I was, uh, I was still in high school. I got the job I want, the big job, what I wanted. How did I get that job? I always wanted to be on the radio. I used right. to walk around with a radio next to my head when I was nine years old. I want to make up tapes. I want to make recordings. I want to, you know, mix. I want to do that. How am I going to do I need a mixer. I can't afford it. I right. taught myself electronics and I built it. Yeah. And that was the, that's, that's literally, and I would, when my sister, I have a twin sister, when she wasn't home, I would go in and steal her turntable. So I had two, I would make up, she would yell. I would make up the, t- until one day I smoked her turntable. That was really bad, oh. really bad. But I made up tapes and I was interning at a uh, cable TV station and the guy there worked at a radio station and he oh. knew that I wanted to do that. And he, I had no confidence. He took the tape out of my jacket that I made on the homemade mixer. So to right. your point, you know, when you have those things in front of you, find a way to get over them uh, because you can, because all you need is within you now. Yeah, absolutely. And I am so much for like anything is possible. And like, if you have a dream, a lot of people like, oh, well, I can't do that. I can't make that happen. How am I going to do that? Like, I don't know, but let's figure it out. Because as soon as you're like, I'm going to make this happen, no matter what, the how just comes. If it doesn't come the first time, it comes another time. And it's just, I strongly believe that no matter what you want to create in your life, it is possible. It might not look the way you want it to, but it is possible. Yeah. If you have the might, the right mindset, which is what you help people with. I yeah. know that you, you work with, with athletes as well. I do. Yeah. And some of them are, you know, on the elite card, if you will. Absolutely. Um, what do they struggle with? Yeah, of course, no names or anything like that. But I'm just kind of curious, you know, are are they like the rest of us? Truthfully, they are. (laughs) Because underneath the athlete facade is a human. And we're all humans. So we all struggle with doubts and limiting beliefs and anxieties. Mm. They are just at a completely different level. Because they get a lot of pressure from coaches, from sponsors. It's they're always putting their livelihood on the line no matter what so competitions if they i know i was just speaking with a um world champion karate i was gonna say player but karate person (laughs) (laughs) um on the weekend and he was saying like he has a qualifying competition coming up and if he doesn't make the qualifying he can't go to the like the step after it And that's where really like the money comes from and all of that. And his, basically his name and his reputation is determined on how well he does in the qualifying because then it goes to the next level. Um, But speaking with a lot of athletes, a lot that I have found is like the internal pressure they put on themselves. And I have found that that takes a lot of athletes out of being an athlete. Because they're like, well, I just, I can't keep going at this level because it's too stressful. It's, there's too much anxiety. And like, they feel like they can't keep it up and Mm. they lose the love of their sport because they put so much pressure on themselves to be perfect. It's, (laughs) yeah, when you see, you know, somebody playing basketball and they just sail down the court, like there's no pressure in the world. You know, maybe they've gotten past what you're talking about, but obviously they're loving what they're doing but yeah. you know the guys that you're talking about um uh, that's a lot of pressure especially the the um you know the, the karate guy um, yeah uh, yeah absolutely is, talk about make or break this is yeah. you know game time and game game over could could result from that but you know would there be another opportunity after that i wonder you know I like to believe so in a different way. Um, Even if you look at like NHL athletes, one game won't necessarily put their career on the line, but a season could. Yeah. And I find that a lot of people expect athletes to be perfect, that they'll never miss a shot. They'll never have that like one moment of, can I do it? Yeah, I can. 
And it's that like split second of doubt or resistance that can make a whole difference. Mm. And like, that's what I love working on. It's just going into it confident that no matter what happens, you'll, you'll be able to handle it. That's um, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, you'd sell me on that in a second because, <laughs> you know, to know that got to make that shot, got to do that. But yeah. I I need to get out of my head. I need to block what's 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 getting in the way of me yeah. potentially screwing it up and just get it done. Because I'm sure they all say deep within, I, I got it. I could do it. I've done yeah. it a ton of times before, but I need to do it this time. Yeah, exactly. And on the flip side, it's also being able to handle the losses and the missed shots and the missed opportunities because they're going, they're going to happen. Nobody right. is perfect. <laughs> so it's yeah. not letting that come into the next moment, the next game, the next match. It's be like, okay, that didn't work. Like wipe that off and come back being like, okay, I got the next one. Wow. Um, we have like literally a minute left. Anything from your book? Um is it become or becoming the Phoenix? Become the Phoenix. Becoming. Becoming. Yeah. There was a G that I wrote and I can't even read it. <laughs> uh, not kidding. See, it's right there. Um, any like one final thing that you you want to bring out that, that comes from the book? Um, what's coming up for me is to let anyone, any of the listeners out there know that if you are going through something that you don't think anyone else will understand, somebody does. It could be me. It could be somebody else in your life that you don't even know because I know one of my biggest I don't want to say regrets because at the time I felt that's what was exactly perfect for me I didn't feel like I could reach out to anyone because I didn't want them to see me as like imperfect mm. um so I felt like I had to do it all on my own and I want listeners and anyone out there to know that you don't yeah so. I yeah. know it's a cliche, but you're never alone. <laughs> it's like, it's, exactly. But sometimes we feel like we're on an island floating, you know, by ourselves because we're afraid to be vulnerable or afraid right. to admit that, yeah, we're not perfect. Uh, I, I, I don't think you realize the amount of positive energy that comes off of you. You don't. You. I, 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 that's what's coming to me. I don't think you know it, but you have so much positive energy. It's, it's, it's insane. You really do. Thank, thank yeah. you. And like very quickly, if we still have a moment, um, my sister's now husband, like at one point had mentioned to me that I am the most like genuinely, let's say positive person he has ever met, but like realistically positive because I can still see the world as it is and still show up seeing the best of it all. So like even the world that's in like shambles and fighting and all of that, I still like look for and seek out the best in every single person because i know it's there somewhere even people that do bad things yes it's yeah. there and you know i i look at i even said this to my kids once that you know you have a criminal they did something they're in jail it might not have been their fault that might have been programmed from their childhood and that's yeah. it just happened that way um but yeah. if, just before you said that the word that that dropped out of the sky into my head was genuine you are genuine Thank you. You really are. It's um, and with everything that you offer, I want to tell people Phoenix PhoenixCoaching.org is your website. Yeah. And starts with a consultation. Chemistry call. I know we said that last time. Say it again. <laughs> a chemistry call. A chemistry call. See, I'm yeah. not I'm focusing on you, not on your website. Last time <laughs> we did a phone call, so I was looking on the website. But yeah, yeah. chemistry call is the best because it says everything. If you don't have the right chemistry. It's really not going to work. It's a relationship when you work with somebody, no matter what it is. Absolutely. And I'm not going to be right for everybody. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You go to the website, phoenixcoaching.org. And Michelle, great having you on today. Thanks, Steve. Yep. And uh, let's everybody look for the positive and you are not alone. Um, reach out to Michelle and, and change your life. Move it forward. And I, I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks, Steve. Me too. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great 
barrier just knocked down. I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.